just trying to survive, basically. I just started kind of like crying. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is. I'm not feeling well. Oh my God, it's rough out here. I just don't have the mental capacity to do difficult right now. Bye bye, Roraria, for this time. What an amazing spot. It's time to move on. Okay. We are just going out of the pass in a place called Roraria. We are sailing north today, and it will probably be like a four day passage. Yeah, we've got some good, uh, like a little wet weather window. Yeah. Normally it's blasting out of the northeast, which is exactly the direction we want to go. and. Over the next 24 hours, it's gonna be uh, really light and then kind of come out of the east, southeast, and then the east. And so we're gonna take advantage of this last uh, little light patch. We're gonna go as far east as we can in the light winds. <laughs> and then when the easterlies hit us, boom, then yeah. hopefully our easting will be done and we'll jot north straight for the Marquesas yeah. and get up there for the cyclone season because, yeah, we don't wanna mess around with those. There are only two dolphins, but they are massive. It's so big. I started feeling super seasick pretty much straight away. Had to lay down and gather my body. I have one of these patches. I've been really seasick lately and I tried a seasickness pill a while back and it was horrible. I was almost more sick from the seasickness pill than I was from like being seasick. So I'm trying this out and hopefully it's a little bit better. I'm just feeling very tired and like groggy. Now we're probably just gonna sit here, listen to some podcasts and I'm gonna lay down a little bit. Hopefully I'll feel better soon. I can't believe I'm feeling sick and it's like zero knots of wind. Useless. The prevailing conditions this time of year start to tend from easterly to northeasterly, which is exactly the course to the Marquesas. Sailing upwind or beating is the most uncomfortable point of sail. The wind and waves are against you, so instead of gently rolling our way to our destination, we'd be slamming through waves which is why most sailors refer to this point of sail as beating. It's not pleasant. So our plan was to take advantage of the light winds and go directly east, so that when the wind came up, we'd be in a better position to have the wind slightly off the bow of the boat to make it as comfortable as possible later on. Unfortunately, it seems we're a bit spoiled by the calm waters of the Tuomotos, and even though the seas were relatively calm and flat, we were still struggling to find our sea legs. The symptoms of seasickness include feeling groggy, generally irritable, and nausea, and we had them all. It wasn't shaping up to be a great first day. Sierra, however, was in super high spirits, which unfortunately for us means she had boundless energy and required a lot of attention. Sweet move, Sierra. What do you think about these conditions, Kaz? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, surprising. Like, I didn't think we'd have this much wind, but we've got at least 15 knots and we're on course, uh, which is sweet. I've got the 9 to 12 watch tonight coming up, and then you've got the 12 to 3 watch. I like the 9 to 12 because I like to stay up a little bit later. And like one of my kind of guilty pleasures is I like to listen to podcasts, like stuff like, uh, like real survival stories, just incredible tales of people get into these accents and then what they have to overcome to survive. Um, the only problem is that we've sailed so far west that the internet has connected to a New Zealand ground station and I can't get any of the normal podcasts that I do right now. 
which is why I'm happy to say that today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. I just gotta connect to a server in the US, it's pretty easy, and it works surprisingly well uh, over satellite internet even. So, blah, 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 okay, connecting. I also do this uh, when I'm shopping for boat parts and stuff because I like to shop in US dollars and I have some pretty sweet discounts back home, so this kind of like lets me get all my shopping results uh, from the US, which is cool. Not only can NordVPN magically teleport your device to over 60 countries, but it also masks your digital identity and footprints. You can kind of think of it as like a private tube through the internet that helps keep your information secure from prying eyes. NordVPN threat protection scans files in real time as they're being downloaded and warns you about potentially dangerous sites. So if you'd like to protect your internet identity and change locations like a superhero, please visit nordvpn.com forward slash svdelos. Link is in the description below. If you do right now, you can take advantage of a special New Year's deal where you can get up to four free months off. Also, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you really can't go wrong. All right, so uh, now that that's all sorted, I'm gonna get back to my watch here. Uh, I have my choice of the Apollo 13 mission or that one about the soccer team in the Andes that crashed and had to resort to cannibalism to survive. Which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. I think it's day two. We left yesterday and we haven't really filmed anything because I personally have been feeling like sh it's been a really tough beginning. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of seasickness or it's because of the patch I'm wearing for seasickness or whatever it is, but I didn't sleep last good last night either. I've been feeling increasingly just bleh. Sierra just puked a little bit earlier. She was feeling pretty puke? seasick. I've almost puked probably like 20 times. But I managed to get her some seasickness pills, so she's doing a little bit better. I'm doing okay. I'm just grumpy and lethargic. I just don't like beating up wind. It's not fun. But the boat is doing really well. We've been making mileage in the right direction and the wind is right where it should be. We have quite a bit of easting. In fact, I just turned the boat 10 degrees to port, which uh, takes us off the wind a little bit. So instead of being like right hard on it, we're now about, you know, we were like 40 degrees off the wind. Now we're about 50 degrees off and even 10 degrees makes a big difference. We're going faster and the boat's a little bit more leveled out. If this wind holds, then we'll do good. We have 350 miles to go. Just, I didn't sleep much last night because there was like just continuous squalls like every 30 minutes there's a different squall so I'd get the sails trimmed and then a squall would come through and then it would rain and then get the cockpit soaked and I'd get it did you film upset. anything? I didn't. I was not in the mood. That and then there so would be lovely. no wind, and so I'd have to take the sails in, and I, that happened like 12 times. So I'm just grumpy. I just want to rest. And Sierra just wants to play. She has zero no. compassion for us. This, this time, mom it. <laughs> This cockpit is like super nice actually because we don't spend much time downstairs at all on passages like this. Uh, we really only cook downstairs and go to the toilet and Sierra doesn't even do that. And we've kind of set up the floor area for her in the cockpit as like a little playpen. It makes it a little easier for us too because she, when she wants to play inside, oh my god. Like, I get so seasick in there. <laughs> Did you play hide and seek? Yeah, let's go! Okay, I like your enthusiasm. I'm 
But yeah, we've been just so out of it, both of us, and I don't know, we haven't really eaten much, just trying to survive, basically. Yeah, so yeah, cool. Tuna. I said that in my nose. I like this. You smell the fish? Yeah, I could, I know. I could smell it too. It was crazy. Yeah, you could like smell the fish from the boat. That was wild. <laughs> I can't believe we got not, didn't get one single bite though. Dang. gonna attempt to uh, heat up some food. We pre-made some food uh, before we left because we knew it was gonna be rough. Brian did like a little spaghetti bolognese so the only thing I really have to do is heat up the sauce and then boil some spaghetti. It's really really nice when you only have like a few days like this to prepare some stuff, especially when we're both feeling so shitty and just like completely out of it. Okay, I managed to whip up together, <laughs> whip up, whip together something. Yeah, this is for daddy. I wish we had done something. Daddy, dude! Oh, thank you. We survived another day. Barely. Now it's night time. 
Because I just spotted a squall. I spotted a squall. I don't need another dozen squalls rolling through ruck in my life tonight. I feel like it, this looks like there's a one time, one time deal though. Usually, so I put Sierra to bed and then I go to sleep for a couple of hours and then at 12, I wake up from 12 to three and then Brian is literally up for the rest, taking cat naps and whatnot. I set my alarm for 30 minute intervals. We have 319 miles to go. Wow. Okay. But I'm feeling a little bit less nauseous, so it's just funny, get I'm some feeling rest. more nauseous. I don't yeah. know why. Right after I ate, now I feel like oh. I'm getting hot flashes. I think oh. I need to lay down. Yeah, just lay down for a bit. Okay, let me know if you need anything. I'll be in the back sleeping. Okay. I love you. I love you. Bye. Good night. night. See you in three hours. Bye. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm almost done with my watch. It's just been blasting like 20 plus knots. We're going like 7 knots, more 7 plus, but it's just kind of a wild ride. Like we bared off quite a lot too, so it's more like on the beam now, but the waves are big because it's 20 knots. It's so much easier and serious sleeping. <laughs> different ball game when she's awake you have to like really it's a lot of things going on she's sleeping good i've checked on her a few times and she's doing good up there so brian is gonna come on in a while hopefully he got a little bit of sleep i'm exhausted i was just sleeping and um the fishing line just went off then oh my god it's rough out here the morning is the best time to troll for fish out here. I usually run two hand lines and one reel with plastic squid lures. This morning, bright and early, the reel hooked up to something, and even though it wasn't a huge fish, because we were blasting upwind, it was a bit difficult to bring in. We could tell it was some type of tuna, but didn't know which exactly until we got it on board. A prize fish would have been a big eye, yellowfin, or just about anything else except what we actually caught. It was a skipjack tuna, also known as a bonito. Although they're pretty to look at, they're not very tasty. The flesh is a dark red, and it's very strong tasting. We found it makes a decent curry, but in this case, we decided to throw it back and hope for something better. Bonito. I'm gonna keep the line in. It's blowing 30 knots. After eight, and I just put Sierra to bed. It's still blowing 20 plus. And I just looked at the weather, and it looks like it might be a wind shift happening kind of 4 a.m. tonight. Like it's gonna go northeast instead of east, which is not good for us. We've actually headed up a little bit more. It is slamming a little bit more, but hopefully, Sierra will be able to sleep, and we just have to see how it goes. We, I think we all had a pretty tough day today. We've literally spent, how many days is it now? Three days all together in this little cockpit. Like, it's just ridiculous. And you've taken a seasickness pill for the first time since I don't know when. I don't know what my deal is. I'm not feeling well. I'm just feeling like tired, lethargic, have a headache. My stomach's unsettled. I feel dizzy. I never take seasickness pills, but I, I took know. one. 
Are you going to be okay out here or do you want me to take the first watch? No, I'll be okay. All I have to do is go like this. Yeah. I can see the radar and the chart letter and then I go like this. <laughs> and then a while later I go like this. So we'll see what this wind shift does in the early morning and... Uh, we're going fast. Yeah, we're going fast. We're going like six plus. So if we can keep this up, we should be there tomorrow. So. We survived another day. Did you survive the night? Barely. <laughs> There wasn't that many squalls last night, which saved me. I don't know if I could have handled any more squalls. The night before I had to do 12 sail changes and it killed me. Last night was pretty chill, although the wind was up was. well above 20 knots and we were beating into it at an angle of like oh. hard on at like 40 degrees, 45 degrees. And so the boat was just bashing into the swells. It was a rough night. Sierra didn't sleep good at all. How are you feeling, Sierra? You feeling good? No. No? I actually ended up putting her in the back in our bed with me. So I didn't do a night watch last night. You did a whole night just... Yeah, I just took little cat naps, set my alarm and I checked the radar and the AIS. Uh, when I woke up, it only takes a few seconds. Why do you think we've gotten like soft? I think it's just because it's been so I, calm? Or? I think it's just a rough passage. I don't yeah. think we realize how rough it is beating into 25 knots. Yeah, it's not fun. And also having Sierra to take care of takes up all your time. Oh, even though she's been super, she's super good. She's been really good. I felt so bad for her last night. She's like, it's so loud too when you hit those. It almost feels like you're just hit something solid. So the sound is very loud and I think she got a little spooked and you just didn't It's like 25 tons of boat hitting like <laughs> 100 tons of water. I know. Like a hammer just, uh, oh, boom. boom. But we did it and I think we'll be there today. We will be there today. Yes. I guarantee it. <laughs> Hopefully the anchorage won't be rolling when we get there. Probably will be. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a few hours left and then we should arrive in. Right on the edge. Okay. Like we're gonna be right there at sunset. Look at this little one. I think somebody has a little bit of energy to um, get out. Arr, Pirate Sierra. Say our land home, mighty. Our land home, <laughs> God. Now we just have to make it there. And like... <laughs> Can you drive with your foot? <laughs> Where are we going? Right over there. Ah! Hold on, Sierra. That's party. The moon tonight is pretty much a full moon, I think. It's incredible just popped out on the top of the island there behind the clouds we're just going a little bit further up yeah we're stretched out right there it seems solid to me solid? it seems like it we did it do it it's kind of sketchy coming in here at night yeah it is there's swell on either side of us but we're the only people in this bay which is nice we're hooked we're back in our cases <laughs> Good job. Good job. I'm gonna have a, a rum, huh? You know, a rum? You. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you do. How's our child? We made it. What is she doing? She's watching something. Sierra, good job on the passage. Oh, I'm so we excited. We did it. We made it to the Marquesas. It's a 
it's been quite an emotional arrival in the Marquesas. I don't know why, it's like, I think I'm just missing the kind of, I'm missing the tomatoes to be honest. It was interesting as soon as we dropped the hook last night, I just started kind of like crying and I was like, whoa. Maybe I was like, uh, you know, I'm quite an emotional person. I was like, maybe I'm just tired and stuff. But then I woke up this morning and I kind of feeling very similar feelings as I did last night. I was just sitting outside talking to Brian and trying to get my head in the right space and trying to figure out what's going on. Marquesas is amazing in a, in a lot of ways, but for us, I feel like it's a very difficult cruising. The anchorages are very rolly. You can't go to shore because it's just breaking waves. Doing anything becomes really difficult and I feel that I just don't have the mental capacity to do difficult right now. We have decided to move from this anchorage and actually sail to the next island because it doesn't look like this island in the near future will have any anchorages that aren't rolly. I just want to say too that I'm so lucky that I have Brian that is always like supporting me and he's never judging me in the way that I'm feeling. I just wanted to try to share some emotions on camera and what it's actually really like and what is going on sometimes behind the scenes and kind of be honest with you guys and I don't know if it makes sense or if uh, you guys can understand some of the stuff that I'm saying but I just wanted to share anyway. So oh, we've decided to sail to the next island over actually because we know it's a pretty uh, protected anchorage right there called Daniel's Bay. We're just gonna head in there and get situated and be in a calm place and they're feeling better already, kind of getting going and how do you feel Brian? I think it's a good plan because of this little angel we really need a place where we can go to shore. Yeah. That's one of the changes we've had to deal with. We can't just jump off the boat and take the paddleboard in and like rock through the surf to the beach anymore. It's just... Yeah, it's just not nice. It's a little rough and uh, it's hard on everybody when when we can't get Sierra to shore to get her energy out. So yeah, he's we're going to do that, nice. make a sail to some place we know is a little bit calmer where we can land the dinghy on the beach. That's what it is. Yeah.